Welcome to the Lawrence County Sportsnet podcast series delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. Give them a call for delivery of your three to five gallon bottled water jugs or get individual cases of bottles delivered straight to your home or work. A special edition of the Sportsnet podcast series here at lcsportsnet.com previewing the playoffs coming up uh, starting this week both in volleyball and in soccer. We'll start uh, on the pitch, as they say. Uh, Up in District 10, the Wilmington Greyhounds boys and girls teams uh, both competing in the postseason. Let's talk about the uh, girls team real quick. The Wilmington Greyhounds ended up getting the five seed in the Class 1A tournament in District 10. Uh, Six teams made it into the postseason uh, out of District 10. It'll be a uh, fairly even 4-5 matchup between them and Gerard uh, up at the Haggerty Family Events Center. Uh, that's a 3.30 kickoff, uh, so an early, uh, early dismissal for sure from Wilmington to get up to Erie uh, for that one. Uh, really impressive what the, the Lady Hounds have been able to do this year. They finish 8-9 and nine overall. Uh, they end up getting uh, selected into the tournament, which I think is well-deserved considering uh, the, the kind of streak that Wilmington went on. They had a lot of players who were out with injury, some who uh, are still out, some who have uh, gotten their way back, which I think is uh, uh, especially uh, effective with Carly Hogg coming back, uh, one of the top uh, offensive players for the uh, Wilmington Greyhounds. Good to see her back. She missed nearly a month of time, actually. Uh, and uh, that's just going to be key, too, because now you have uh, a chance to get you know more in, um, options for maybe like an Annalise Hendrickson, who's really stepped up in, in the abs, and she had a pair of goals in the season finale uh, for Wilmington. And more than anything, too, with so many players having to go and play in different positions, being so... so you know, down in terms of numbers, that's only going to pay off here uh, come playoff time to be able to maybe adjust formations or whatever it may be as necessary uh, for the Hounds. So best of luck to the Lady Greyhounds. Uh, I think they have a great chance to uh, potentially get that uh, victory over Girard. They would then face the uh, top seed Seneca in the semifinals. Need to uh, make it to the championship game to advance into the state tournament. Uh, so best of luck to the Greyhounds. Uh, hoping to bring home a couple of wins in the playoffs. On the boys' side of the bracket, the Wilmington Greyhound boys team with the number one overall seed in the Class 1A tournament. Uh, they are going to take on the winner of the 4-5 matchup between Mercer and West Middlesex. Uh, that game uh, taking place on Monday, so the semifinal schedule for Wilmington uh, to be on the 26th. That is this coming Thursday night. Uh, well, we assume night might be during the day, uh, site and time to be determined. Talk, talk, talk about this sophomore, Ryder, Tur- excuse me, Ryder Turbo, though. 24 goals and 11 assists on the year. He's been the main offensive threat uh, for the Hounds. Uh, throw in the senior as well in Colin Hill. He's got 12 goals of his own. Uh, impressive stuff for sure. And a, a pretty high-scoring uh, team over the course uh, of the uh, season. A lot of sophomores getting time. Uh, though Josh Legnowski uh, really getting it done uh, in between the pipes as well uh, for this uh, Wilmington Greyhounds team. Uh, Big time uh, performances all throughout the year. They're well deserving uh, of this number one seed. Uh, The record 12-4-1 overall, well two losses and one of the ties uh, came in the first three games of the season and uh, against some uh, pretty good opponents too. Slippery Rock and Hickory up in classification. Neshanik out of conference or out of district even uh, was the tie uh, as well. You know, rattling off uh, all these wins in a row uh, was a, a very impressive uh, feat to say the very least uh, over the course of this entire season. So uh, we, we think this Wilmington team uh, should be a force to be reckoned with and they're going to face either Mercer or West Middlesex again in the semifinals. And they beat both those teams uh, in both conference games in the regular season. West Middlesex by scores of uh, six to two and eight to one, actually. Mercer a little bit tighter game. Uh, the constant battle against the Mustangs uh, won three to one at Mercer, and then a two nothing victory uh, for the Hounds at home. Uh, so we'll see which uh, opponent the uh, Wilmington Greyhound boys team will end up having. But they have a two and zero advantage against either one of them. It's always tough though to beat a team three times. So best of luck to Wilmington, and we'll hopefully be able to get you some coverage of that one on Thursday night up there in District 10. Well, there's your soccer update. We have uh, four WPIAL teams in the volleyball playoffs to look at as well, and we'll break down those brackets when we return here on the Lawrence County Sportsnet podcast series. LC Sportsnet powered by LCAP, your podcasts here delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. 
don't get left out to dry, call the Penn Ohio Bottled Water Company for the fastest and most efficient bottled water delivery service in the area. Penn Ohio offers bottled water ranging from 16.9 ounce bottles to five gallon jugs, perfect for your next event or office water cooler system. Also, don't forget to ask about their custom labeling options. Visit PennOhioBottledWater.com for more information and to get a quote on their delivery services. Whether it's at home, in the office, or on the sidelines, Penn Ohio has you covered. And we're back to talk WPIAL now for the girls' volleyball. Four teams, three in Class 2A and one in Class 1A, uh, making it into the WPIAL playoffs. And let's start with that 1A team, the Union Scotties, the two-time uh, undefeated uh, section champions, defending section champions, unable to get the section crown this year. A couple of rough games in the start, but this is a team that's firing on all cylinders here late in the year, uh, including a big win at the end of the season over Burgettstown, uh, who was unbeaten in section play leading into that final week. So uh, a pretty impressive run uh, for Union. Uh, I think the main part is that they found a little bit of uh, diversity in the offense. You knew with a six-footer and Kelly Cleaver that she was going to be the mainstay of that offense throughout the course of the year, no question about it. Uh, it was whether they could get sustained offense the rest of the way. And honestly, it's been the defense that's been pretty impressive. Uh, Mallory Gorgas as the uh, libero really working uh, in the back line. Uh, but DJ Jones especially has played well. Hayden Strickler has been in that rotation. Allie Ross getting some swings. There's lots of names that's kind of doing their job uh, from both the front line and the back line. Uh, really working in and figuring out what that rotation is going to look like throughout the playoffs. The issue, they played a three seed, Bishop Canavan, in the first round. Uh, that's the uh, Crusaders, who were, I believe, five times in a row they were WPL champions. Uh, last year, they ended up making it to the semis, but they uh, got to the semis by beating Union in the second round. So a familiar opponent uh, for Canavan, but they have a lot of studs back. Uh, that's going to be a tough ask for sure for the Lady Scots, but we'll see what they can do. That's a uh, Tuesday game this week at Bishop Canavan, by the way, as well. The three-seed Canavan uh, able to host that first-round game. As for the Class 2A tournament, uh, again, three teams have made it uh, from Section 1 that are Lawrence County teams. Elwood City finished tied for third place uh, in, the, uh, in the section. They, unfortunately, though, get the lowest of the three uh, seeds out of, the, uh, out of that well, out of that two-way tie and lowest out of three seeds from Lawrence County. They get the 12 seed, which means they have a pigtail game. They will take on Central Valley uh, in the first round. Now, the good news is, though, that means Elwood City gets to host that playoff game uh, at Elwood City on Monday night. 7.30 is uh, the scheduled time. We'll actually have coverage of that one uh, on the NFHS network. Gives us a chance to remind you all these playoff games, uh, for WPIL at least, have to be NFHS broadcast uh, only. So, unfortunately, yes, you'll have to pay to watch, but at least we will be able to provide coverage uh, of some of these games throughout the postseason. But looking at this Elwood City team, I mean, obviously it begins with uh, with Clara Noble and what an impressive career she has had. The six-foot senior uh, really been swinging it pretty well uh, over the last three seasons. And really cool, you know, not just for her, but for the, the rest of the seniors, you know, in uh, Lena Nacera for sure, uh, and Kira Rosansky, especially another uh, big-time swinger on that team. Uh, and and uh, Ellie Colansis and Maddie Long getting all those seniors one last home game uh, in the playoffs nonetheless. Yes, it's a pigtail game, but it is still a playoff game at home. Uh, that's going to be a really special atmosphere uh, for sure for our coach Jennifer Trudy uh, and that Elwood City program. Uh, if they win that game, they will take on uh, the number five seed, the Avonworth Antelopes, which also is a familiar opponent as that's who Elwood City played uh, in one of the opening round games last year. And they gave the Lopes a, a pretty good run for it uh, down on the Lopes home court as well. Uh, that would be a Wednesday first round game. Again, this pigtail game coming up on Monday. Shenango is the number nine seed. They will take on eight seeded South Allegheny uh, on Wednesday in the first round of the tournament here in Class 2A. That will be a Wednesday six o'clock uh, first serve, first of two games at Freeport High School. And uh, that could set up Pretty interesting if Shenango is to win that. They would take on Freeport on Saturday in the second round, and that would be uh, a rematch of last year's championship game. And we wondered at the beginning of the year what the offense would look like uh, for the Shenango team after losing a pair of 1,000 career kills uh, killers on their team from uh, from last year's squad. Didn't take long to realize that, you know, Addie Case was going to be a big part of the offense. Uh, she's got a wicked, powerful swing uh, for sure, you know, throw in uh, Maria Bryant, a great defender, uh, getting in a uh, 
a couple of tall uh, bodies up front too, especially Mara DeFrank uh, really working on the front line. McKenna Emmerich, a senior up there as well. Uh, been a fun fun season, though, yes, obviously not nearly as uh, successful as Shenango had last year uh, with that squad, but one that they are very much capable of uh, winning a couple of matches in the district tournament. And can't go without talking about the setter, Elise Lenhart, uh, playing through in her, her battle with uh, uh, the lymphoma, fighting through um, and just, you know, really honestly trying to do it quietly too. Like not, there's not a lot of attention being drawn to it. And I think that's exactly the way that the family uh, and Elise herself want it. She just wants to play ball and absolutely love that idea. So uh, again, congratulations to, to her and this entire team uh, for what they have done this season and best of luck to them as they are in the 8-9 matchup against uh, the South Allegheny Gladiators. The other team that is going to be uh, going in the first round, the sixth seed is Nishanik. They will take on the 11 seed uh, Derry Trojans at Quaker Valley. Uh, that game again Wednesday, 6 o'clock. If uh, they win that game, likely to play Quaker Valley. It's Quaker Valley or the winner of one of the, uh, the play-in games. Uh, that will be going on to either Waynesburg Central or Fort Cherry for uh, Quaker Valley's opponent. But looking at this Nishanik Lancer team, uh, pretty uh, pretty clear from the game that we saw last week that, that we're going to be seeing and hearing the name Michaela Measle for a while. A 5'11 sophomore, she was absolutely uh, dominant at times uh, in their game against Mohawk to end the season. That's how it's been most of the year. Uh, but you got another sophomore in Jaden Noge who can uh, swing from both the front and back line. Uh, the, the defense, though, I think is what has been most impressive. I mean, Bella Parade and Kat Nativio especially, just absolute studs on that back line. Not much is uh, finding its way down to the ground uh, with those out there. But a, a pretty young team, though. I mentioned those two as seniors. Uh, Adrian Arnold, uh, of course, as a uh, senior setter, doing a lot of the uh, the work as well, uh, throwing Kate, uh, Kate Freeze as well uh, on the defensive uh, and uh, in the out, uh, offensive part. When they're rolling, these seniors uh, work really well, obviously, but there's a lot of youth to this team uh, that is going to be fun to watch for a couple of years. Uh, a team that can definitely be uh, making some splashes here throughout the uh, WPL tournament. And, uh, you know, one game at a time, but a match against Quaker Valley at 3-6 match could be a lot of fun uh, there in the second round. Uh, but they will take on, again, Derry at Quaker Valley on Wednesday evening. 6 o'clock start for that one. Well, that about will wrap things up here for our uh, postseason preview for volleyball and soccer. Uh, we'll have our uh, normal preview for Week 9, a couple of big games coming up in Week 9 for sure. Uh, we'll get that podcast uh, out in the next day or so uh, as we get ready for a couple of huge ones. Here's another huge one. How about this? We will have coverage on Wednesday evening of the uh, Junior High Football Championship between Nishanik and Laurel. That game 6 o'clock Wednesday in Spartan country. Going to be a fun one uh, there. We're glad to be a part of that for sure. Uh, it's going to be an absolute blast uh, to be able to see some of the future uh, players that we'll be seeing on the high school gridiron uh, doing battle for a uh, junior high championship. Hopefully we'll get uh, as much coverage as we can of these high school volleyball matches as well. We're doing what we can again. Uh, NFHS Network requires that our games be uh, behind the paywall. Uh, we're doing everything we can to uh, Get as many games on as possible. So stick with us. Uh, help us out. Give us a call. We want to get as many games on as we can. But we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your dedication to the county athletes. We're glad to bring it to you. Thanks for tuning in live or archives. And thanks for enjoying our, our podcast here today on Lawrence County Sportsnet, powered by LCAP.